That's what we become. That's what we become. We become. That's what we become. That's what we become. We become. Been around a little bit, but not as long as little foot. Oversensitive, and then we blame it on political correctness. That shit got me pessimistic. Why we try to please them all, and that's where acceptance. We all a little off in exception. Eli, quit acting like a bee and get to step in like Eli. Stop virus bad, why police have all the cannons there? Cops these days got us look good like Afghanistan. Complicated weapons, who we call it for this robbery. If you think of on about the action, Connery. Honestly, these days kill it gets so fucking publicized. First you fry the yoga by the dead, it got like T.I. That we on to the next After death the check And over dinner Argument Presidents Don't have a sense But blame for your cop outs Fuck the cops out Cause I'll play a game of knockout Oh passion Now blast it decapping Bunch of backstabbing While we run rapping That's what we become That's what we become Race. I've been lied to enough, it's fucking up my mental state Living in a virtual projection with sinful snakes Everything we eat and touch is a little fake I shank a cop, then pass the knife to K. Kirk Is the pig dead? Stab him in the head to make sure No justice, no peace, I bust the chrome piece Your brain's on the dash, now you slumped in your seat Protect yourself from the government, nigga underlay They shooting up elementary schools to take our guns away I'm in the house trapped Waiting for the judgment day, cause they ain't finna torture me at Guantanamo fucking back. No compassion, no blast and decap. Bunch of backstabbing while we run rapid. That's what we become. That's what we become. We be yo, yo, plum. Wonder what's a sucking dumb. No compassion, no blast and decap. Bunch of backstabbing while we run rapid. That's what we become. That's what we become. We be yo, yo, plum. Wonder what's a sucking dumb.
What is up, Kane family? How is everybody doing tonight? I hope you guys are having a great Monday. I know it's Monday. I know it can be a struggle, but hey, spring practice is right around the corner. Week two coming in. We're getting, we're starting to get into it. Starting to get into the rhythms. Starting to get into the vibes. We got 20 people with us. Awesome. Y'all are awesome. We got Tay Wet Williams, Jalen Williams. How you doing, man? How you doing, Q Irvin? What do I think about DJ? I'll answer that. I'll answer that definitely. James West. We are balling this year. Yes, sir. We definitely are. We definitely are. A beat is coming down. I'm definitely really high on the Canes. And, you know, just talk Canes, you know. Tonight, it's week two. I want to talk with you guys. What y'all think? What do y'all expect in week two? What's the most important priority for y'all? Slim Shade Canes, what is up, man? How you doing, brother? Demetrius Abrams, hey, man. Glad to see you join back. How you doing, brother? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good myself for a Monday. I am doing pretty good myself for a Monday. So the, the one thing, I'll answer the questions that y'all talked about before, but I want to kind of set the tone of what we're going to talk about today. I think it'd be interesting is, uh, you know, the number one thing that we want to see in spring practice. What it, What is it in week two that we really want to see and we got to look at? And I know for sure because I've seen it in my comments left and right, all over, text messages, just, just everything. People keep saying to me, Anton, this offensive line, this offensive line is the, the worst. We're not going to win anything. This offensive line is just awful what are we gonna do yada 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 first thing i'm gonna say to comment to that and i always say and i'm gonna keep saying it it is week two of spring ball it is march okay there's a long way to go and then people throw down hey it's spring practice indoors what the heck man what the heck look it's spring they need to get the sod and the grass outside to all those who don't know it it's got to get there sod it up and get it the field prepared that's what's going on Manny Diaz isn't being weak on his players he's just getting the facilities prepared and that's why they're using the indoor facility and I'm okay with that because it's kind of like you, you get your pile of Legos and you can try and try out all the players see what you're gonna do with them and an indoor practice facility you know keeps people more safe you know healthy and fall is when the heat the thick and thin comes in and you just push them as heck as you can so you know that's that's my thought on that but um the o-line everyone's gonna keep talking about it. here's the thing regardless of whatever happens i firmly believe it's gonna improve now drop down in your in the chat if you think the o-line is gonna improve yes or no i'm gonna see if you all think so and here's here's my thought that why it's gonna improve and why we shouldn't worry and caution too much about it it was so bad last year, it's only going to get better. If we're able to manage what little that we could last year, it's only going to get better. And Butch Bear is the man for the job, okay? I've talked to some journalists and stuff, and they're saying, look, it, it, some sure Kane says, yes, it's going to improve. Yeah, it's it's going to improve. It's not going to be a TBJ, I hope. <laughs> Got some hesitation. I hope. I'll put that. One and a half yeses. Dog, down. Get down, Bella. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, MHD, we, we got Finesse O-Line. Okay. All right. Siri says, yes. All right. All right, so most of the people are saying, yes, it is going to improve. So I'm glad to see that, but I just wanted to clear that up. Look, spring practice week two, we want to see improvement and all that. But keep in mind, we don't even have the guy that, you know, uh, goodness, uh, Kennedy. He's not even in the starting lineup. These lineups are completely, you know, just let's throwing everybody. That we can't give him all a chance. That's what it is. The big time. We need to hit the portal all line help from depth. I mean, I'm not against that. I've been preaching. I've been saying I would like at least one more transfer in. Parker Braun was the dude, and he didn't come in. Um, I haven't heard much about the transport portal yet, so we'll see what's going on there. Um, here in the old line will improve soon because we have a different scheme. Yes, yes, that's a great point. That's exactly what I was going to lead to next year. I believe the, the office staff, yeah, 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 better job and weaknesses and have any, yes, Yes, that you're hitting all the points. Exactly. I'm with you, man. I'm with you, Kyrie because I feel that, you know, regardless of what happens, it's going to improve in, in just from the scheme. If you're going to have a motion, the defensive line will be there, but the linebackers ain't going to be running up the gut, okay? They're going to be like, wait, crap, there's a motion. I need to be watching. I need to be, you know, playing zone, whatever. Whatever the case, the scheme is going to help. Now, it's not going to solve the problem. It is not. There's going to be better effort, but I think we have better athletes now. I know we lost some experience, but I think we, got, we gained some also in you know Kennedy and we still have the guys that played last year it'll be a little bit but they played some and I think I think it's gonna be better okay uh Rigger says if the quarterback released the ball quickly they should uh yes yes okay that's the other point in what I wanted to lead into because us fans were number one concerns O line and that's understandable it was not that great but it had it had a opportunity it had chances and it wasn't awful in some games when we were passing it like heck and you know also players are willing to run through a wall for many yes 
Yes, they are. They really are. And I think the strength and conditioning coach is going to work wonders to the O-line. Regardless of what happens, I think he's going to work wonders to the O-line. They're going to bulk up. They're going to be stronger. I think it's definitely going to be. The O-line needs to be more aggressive. It does. It does. And I think there's chemistry is the other problem. They kept rotating stuff because uh, all the guys weren't getting pushed off enough. They weren't holding the line at all. And so they kept throwing other guys. And that's uh, chemistry and communication is a huge thing on the offensive line. I think that's part of the problem. Um, no one wants to disappoint the big cane. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Nobody wants to dis disappoint the big cane drill for sure. And I love seeing that from Manny Diaz. Bringing in competition for sure. Which players are coming in the summer? Um, so you're talking about the O-line? Uh, or, or just in general, because in the summer, what we're looking to add is Bubble Bolden is number one. Um, I believe our punter is also coming in then. Um, Matoch is coming in, a big name coming in. Um, we have a couple of recruits, more on the secondary that's coming in. Um, shoot, I'm, I'm forgetting the name. We got some... Uh, uh, gosh, I can't remember the defensive back's name, but we got a four-star defensive back and such, so it'll be pretty good um, recruiting class. In fact, uh, uh, let me pull it up so you just know. Um, but those are the basic the, the highlights... I think that's the basic case. I don't know of any... For the offensive line, though, I want to say, like, if they're coming in, they're, they're not going to be start. I hope they're not going to be starting because offensive line is, is really in college, FBS level, Miami. You, you, there's no way you're going to be physically in shape for starting year one. Usually. Yes, Christian Williams. Thank you. Thank you, Woodboy. I could not remember his name. Christian Williams is the guy that's coming in. Um, bubble Bowl. And because our secondary is actually a subtle concern that people haven't noticed. We only have three guys on scholarships in our secondary in spring practice. It's not that we don't have other guys coming in. It's just they're not coming in until after the summer. I'm not terribly worried about it, but it is a little bit thin for my liking. Takori Couch will be a stud. I agree, man. I'm really excited about seeing Takori Couch for sure. Um, I'm very interested to see what he does on the field and how he produces. What's going on with the dude from UCLA? Not Jim, but the other guy. Uh, Chigozi Naruka, is that, is that the guy that we're talking about? Is that the one that you're wondering about, Williams? I mean, uh... He's he's transferring, but uh, let me. I'm. I, that's a that's a good question, because I haven't heard anything about a Nur, Uh Let me let me double check. I felt like he hasn't come in over yet because he's a transfer. Uh, is my guess, but I want to be correct. I thought he was coming after uh, spring. Um, how's our DL D line looking? Great question. It's looking freaking fantastic. Um, first off. Uh, you, it's hard to tell if it's the offensive line is so bad or the defensive line is so good in this talk of lines and spring practice. Um, the guys that are starting right now defensive line are probably not going to be all the starters in there. We're throwing in guys that we're just trying out, like Scott Patch from defensive end. I don't think he's going to be a starter. I think he's going to be a rotational guy. You know, Pat Bethel, he may or may not be a starter because you got Chigozi coming in also, and that's then it's probably going to be going to be a starter. So they're looking really, really, really good. Al Blades will be the other starting defensive back. Definitely. Some shade games, I think it's Al Blades for sure. And uh, definitely Bandy. Uh, those are the guys I think that are going to be starting, and they still are there. Uh, but the defensive line is looking good. Ford was making plays. He was blasting through the line. Uh, Silvera was blasting the line. So um, I'm okay with seeing some of that. But I really hope in spring practice week two, we're going to hear about the line, offensive line, getting you know some chemistry going, getting a little bit better together, unity. Um, but what I hear is Butch Berry's on their case. He's screaming the heck out of them. He's working their butts off. The strength conditioning coaches too. They're they're giving it the effort. You know they're they're putting it. And we have athletes. We have athletes. Uh, we'll get there. Okay. I think we'll get there. I'm not too worried about it. And Trayvon Hill, what's going on with him? Trayvon Hill's coming in also. Also, but uh, but he's he's not. You know, spring ball. He's not going to be their big big man. It's fall time. Okay. Fall time. But he's he's coming in. No, no question about it. D is solid. Oh, the O is question mark right scheme in a weak line you know it's, it's true yeah summer um but um the thing that i want to mention about with the quarterback i'm going to transition this kind of to the quarterback part is a weak o line a scheme helps but a quarterback the type of quarterback you have behind it will affect how good i guess you could say the offensive line will look do I think they'll slide Bandy inside and nickel and out blitz on the outside? Hill doesn't graduate till late. Exactly, some shit against. Thank you. He's coming in after the summer. Um, so those those big names, I mean, they're coming, but after the summer. That's what I mean about spring ball. Sometimes us fans get excited because it hasn't been football in a long time, but we forget that not even the whole roster is there. A good big part of the roster is still not there and coming in. Seven eight six canes, man. What is up, man? How, glad to have you here, man. Appreciate you coming. Um, so I think. The quarterback controversy also that people forget about, and we'll see in the scrimmages is, look, Jaron Williams is the best passer. He's proven it in week one. 
Now, that's not to say that Nikosi can't beat him out or Tate Martell. But as of week one, Jaron's been the consistent passer, right? We're going to have a great team this year. Douglas, I am really excited about this year uh, more than ever in any other ones. And I know it's coming off of a 7-6 season, but man, turnover chains are going to be coming, man. Um, the offense is going to be humming, I think. It's going to be fine, man. I do think. I, I think they'll both stay aside and they might plug in a freshman nickel to kind of hide him. Just the thought. Uh, it's possible. I'm curious to see what freshman will, will work into the secondary and i'm a little worried about it because we're thin there but i think we have a talent it's more of an experience uh question mark there what did i think of pro day um is this live so many notifications david yes yes this is live david <laughs> this is live david you actually caught me live man isn't that amazing um yeah by the way guys y'all can call in the phone lines are open um let me make sure they're open but i believe they are yeah phone lines are open i'm going to be taking in calls i want to hear your guys thoughts what you're looking for in week two but what I was talking about the quarterback part, okay, Jaren's your best passer, but when you have a weak O line and he doesn't even have four seconds to throw it off, uh, maybe Nick Hosey running out of the pocket or on the run passing it will look better or work for the offense better, or even more Tate Martell, you know? And that's something that we're going to have to watch out for coming into our actual, you know, uh, scrimmages. So that's something that's got to be factored in. I don't think we'll see that in spring until the scrimmages. So that's interesting. What quarterback do I think we'll be able to pick up on the new playbook? Uh, Douglas Spencer, what's up, man? I appreciate you coming in. I'll answer your question in a sec. Um, I just uh, got here. What do you think is going to be starting? Okay, quarterback, quarterback. <laughs> Proctor's the best passer. David, you're so high on Proctor. I'm going to be a little bit nervous if he beats them all out. It's, <laughs> He's going to be asking, like, really? All those guys with that highly talented recruits just lost out? It's 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 hard for me to believe that. I He has been good, but I think he's just a, a, a good guy for, you know, scout team, okay? But, you know, Proctor knows the playbook. Okay, that's a very valid point. David, I'm with you there. He definitely knows Enos' system. Coming in back from Arkansas, definitely. Um, no worry, you hide the off a line when they're weak and you run screens and draws. Exactly, Kieran. Exactly. So uh, it's curious to me what, what because Eno said he's going to build this system around the players. Now, us fans being happy and excited, uh, we think about, yeah, because he's going to feature our amazing players. What also means he's not going to feature our bad players. O line, okay, you know, uh, maybe an accurate quarterback or something like that. So, what you do, and as Kira Irvin is talking about, is you, you run screens, you know, you do draws and such, and that's exactly what you got to do. Um, I don't know if Proc, here's the thing about Proc, I just don't hear the coaches talking about him specifically. I know he's not, they're not being asked about him. I, I'll be shocked, man. I'll be really shocked. I don't think he possesses an athleticism ability that's going to shine and even the intangibles to beat everyone out he might but we'll see uh nice young dude i appreciate it i appreciate your positivity man i appreciate that encouragement it really helps me out man um uh, because you, you know they're grinding it, it's uh, you gotta keep going keep going at it and when y'all throw up positivity it really helps me out it makes my day man mayfield was a walk-on I'm not discounting them. I'm not discounting them. Tony, because I'd like to the show. Any news on Tommy Kennedy and O-Line? Is he here yet? So Kennedy is here, as far as I know. Uh, I, I got to check out. But he, he's not going to be worked in a line. Um, so d don't... He's not going to be worked in a line. They're trying to everyone else before that. Um, do you think we're ready for UF? As of right now, today? No, not at all. We don't know who the starting quarterback is. Our offensive line is not together. The playbook's got to be learned. I, there's so many things. No, we're not ready for Florida today. So thank goodness it's March, but um, the 100 days can hurry up, but the team needs those 100 days, definitely. Uh, I'm not throwing down, I'm just asking. So you're asking about uh, who's Proctor, the walk-on? Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how's the tight end position? They're doing great, man. They're doing excellent. Someone asked me, I believe it was in a comment section out in the chat, Michael Irvin. He's actually impressed and done very well. Um, he's made some nice, impressive plays and catches. Um, Brevin has been balling as we expected him to. They're all healthy. Will Mallory's out there. Well, Brian Pollandy is still out with the knee injury. He's kind of uh, up and down, but we'll see. Dude, you don't need an athlete quarterback man when you have so many around him. Can you say Ken Dorsey? No, I, I, I'm with you, David. But if we have a weak line, if we have a weak line that can't hold the defensive line for three seconds, do you really believe that Proctor will be the guy that can do it? Or do you think Tate Martell or uh, Nikosi Perry with their athleticism on their legs will be better, you know? Um, I'm not discounting Williams, by the way, either. He, he has leg ability, okay? He does. It's just not as um, explosive as the competition so far. Um, yeah, Juco player. Dorsey had a spectacular O-line. Exactly, Roger. He, that's, that's the thing that I'm trying to put into account here. 
you know, it's not as weak as people are making it. It, it isn't, you know, people are really scared about it, but it was part of the scheme. And honestly, disappointment down there just beat out and they were just tired. And it, it's tough being an O-line guy and not seeing any scores being put up. So I, I'm with you there. What do you think about the big Kendra? I love it. It's so Manny Diaz. And I love the fact that he hasn't said, oh, only if you're a tight end, a defensive end, a line. No, 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 no. This is man v man. Everybody goes at it. Kane style, let's go, prove your worth. I think it's great. I think it's, Diaz knew and he saw it, especially, I think he was hurt most with last season because his team was playing on an elite level, but the offense was not. He saw the locker room break down. He saw the total collapse and he knew that that had to be fixed for us to be a team. And so that's been a priority for him. And with these big cane drills, it's a locker room thing. With him putting guys that, hey, you're a leader. Hey, you got these responsibilities. That's a locker room. I love that theme. I think it's exactly what you got to do. Exactly what you got to do. I love seeing that. All right, hold on. We got a caller in. What is up? What is up? This is Miami Hurricanes time. Who do I have on the phone line here? Hi, Anthony. This is Anthony. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing, brother? Fine. And you, how was your weekend? Oh, it's pretty good. Pretty good, man. Um... Yeah, pretty busy. I have busy. a question, actually. Yeah, go um, for it. When it comes to, um, it, because I know Carson Beck already committed to, I think he committed to Florida already. Georgia. So, uh, Georgia. What quarterback, out of all the quarterbacks who are recruiting, who do, you, who do you want to commit to the U? Do you like any of the quarterbacks who are recruiting? It, or do you it, want to do like what we did with uh, Peyton? Uh, um... Well, in a recruiting standpoint, you got to have one quarterback in every single class. And I'm going to try to basically talk spring practice in this uh, call-in show today. But now, since you mentioned the quarterback guy, it's got to be the guy that's committed currently to Tennessee. Um, I'm trying to find him here, his name. he Harrison Bailey is my guy, in my preference. I'm, I'm curious to see if we'll be able to snatch him away or not. He's currently right. He's a yeah, pro-style. Honestly- and I really, I really like him. And he's a – I'm kind of biased on him because he's Marietta. That's, like, basically my backyard – so I like Georgia guys. You look at Georgia quarterbacks. I mean, you've had Deshaun Watson, Trevor Lawrence, um, Fromm, Justin Fields, and hey Williams. All the, my, Georgia is a just a, a field for quarterbacks. So I and they're proven quarterbacks. The high school competition in football for quarterbacks is pretty intense here in Georgia. And so that, that's my guy there to answer that question. Yeah, yeah, you would you would be. I'm shocked with the whole Georgia thing. I'm surprised Texas doesn't develop a whole bunch of quarterbacks because it seems like Texas is the hardest competition when it comes to uh, high school football. Why yeah, is that? yeah, for sure, for sure, definitely, man. Hey, but uh, well, I'll tell you this. Uh, back to what I'm trying to focus the stream on. What are you looking for in spring week two? What is your, uh, you know, hey, I'm looking for this. Is it, you know, a, a new kind of big king drill? Is it a scheme, a playbook, quarterback competition? What is it that's, you know, uh, on your radar? For me, I... I I want to, us to focus on uh, the the defensive backfield uh, because I agree with you. That's a low key problem we we're not realizing because we had Michael Jackson for like three years. Oh yeah, and yeah. we didn't have to worry about him. Yeah, yeah. And and to Corey, honestly, to Corey, to Corey Couch, I, I like I said when I talked to you, I think it was yesterday. Uh, mm-hmm. or was it the day before? I think you had a live stream on Saturday or something like that this weekend, right? Uh, it wouldn't be this weekend, been earlier. That may have been someone else's channel. No, last weekend. Last. Yeah, weekend. yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. Uh, yeah. Uh, I said honestly, I rather have. I I like, I I, I like um what's his name the 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 cornerback that we have now. Bandy. Um, Bandy, but. Him and Corey scare me with their height, to be honest, because I don't think they can last. I, with the, you know, how big the receivers. I, I have to disagree now. with you there. I think it's a mentality. I mean, you talk, you hear Bandy, and he talks about in his interviews. He's like, "I got confidence. I'm gonna prove it to you." And I think, and in the chat, they're talking about it. Yeah, over under Tony Bandy with five interceptions. I I think under, 
And David, yeah, David says Hunter to throw away from him. That's what I think. I think they'll throw away from him. I think he's a guy that he's he's really good in coverage. He's just solid. And he's feisty. And he seeks to the ball. I think he's going to be solid. I think they're going to throw away to the uh, inexperienced guy. Yeah, I think we have athleticism. I don't think height has been the problem. I don't think it is. You look at the guys. They have proven it's, it's a defensive scheme that it fits a guy that regardless of height. I see what you're saying. And usually that's not the case. But in my opinion, and what I've seen is the height, they, they, they over overcame it and they keep proving it. So I, that's my yeah, opinion. No, the reason why I, I said that is because what scares me, uh, when I am already predicting we're going to the ACC championship. So what scares, I don't think he can cover T. Higgins because T. Higgins is like the the wide receiver for uh, Jordan Higgins or whatever his name, the, the receiver for Clemson. Oh, I see what you're saying. T. Higgins, yeah, 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 for Clemson guy. Well, you know, yeah. in those case scenarios, I, I follow what you're saying because he's a tall dude or something like that. We have a a plethora of athletes of different shapes and sizes. And you hear DSC talks about we, we hire guys, or not hire, we recruit guys that they're able to play different positions at the same time. Like Smith, Derek Smith, they're throwing him at safety and trying him out there. No, he was not a safety, but he possesses traits and qualities that he might. And I like that because the, the other thing is, he, usually secondary doesn't get wiped as much and you don't rotate it as much, but he still does during the game. And it's because he, the athleticism and talent does not drop off. So uh, I think an athlete we'll be okay for Clemson. It may be a different player starting, but, you know. Wasn't Derek Smith an athlete when we brought him in originally? So he, he he's a perfect example. I think he would be good at safety, but... He plays linebacker most of the time, though. So yeah, he's, yeah. I'm not sure what his recruiting profile was. I don't remember if it was athlete or whether it was uh, non-safety. I know it wasn't safety, basically. And I know that whoever they – like, they pick up, picked up a couple of guys that – they're saying cornerback, they're saying safety and such. But like I think they, they, won't, you know they may not play that position because they have athletic ability that they can play multiple ones. So I like seeing that. Um, uh, and the D-line is a beast. Oh, well – the death at D tackle scares me a little bit. Until Ch Chikozi Naroku comes in, the defensive death in the defensive tackle position scares me a little bit because no, we. Have I, I follow what you're saying, but I would say in week one they've pretty proven their worth in like four. It was not a big name for us, but he blasted the offensive line on a couple of plays. So Vera, as we expected and hoped, has been playing very well. Um, the other guy, Pat Bethel, has been putting in solid work. He's showing his experience and such. So um, that's my thought. But, hey, I'm going to try to take in on another call because I got, I got someone ringing. I appreciate you giving in your thoughts, man. Okay, have a good, good rest of your day. Yeah, you too, man. All right, whoever was calling me in, I'm trying to find what was the area. Ring it again. I'll pick you up. You're next on the line. I'll appreciate you. I want to keep keep it coming, guys. Keep rolling here. I'll throw in my number down in the chat. Um, what are you looking for in week two of spring practice? What's your number one thing that you are looking for? Because it's it's still early on, but we have at least something to base on. Okay, I messed that up. <laughs> uh, there's no three at the end of that. Let me try that number one more time. Good gosh. Uh, that's what happens when you talk and type, man. There we go. Now we got the right number up. Hit that over there. Call me in. I want to hear your guys' thoughts. The D-backs are then Bandy Blades. Have the speed uh, to be dominant players. Next week, we'll reveal anything in that regard. Okay, defensive backs. So, um... D other than banding blades, um, Osborne destroyed, I believe it was Ivy. Uh, now it's uh, ex experience versus you know athleticism there, so I'm not. I do believe they possess it, but I think they're gonna have to learn it. They're definitely gonna have to learn it. Hey, hey, hey! Who do I have on the phone line here? Yeah, this is Tony Jenkins. My diehard came been there since you know early '90s. You got to get JJ McCarthy. Mm -hmm. That is a must. That is a must recruit. He is a quarterback that is a special talent. He's doing it on every level. You know, we got three good quarterbacks. I like Tate Martell. I like Jaron Williams. I like Nkozi Perry. But to me, JJ McCarthy is the one that will take us to the dynasty level. I got you. I got you. So is this the guy that's uh, from Illinois? No, I'm from I'm from St. Augustine, Florida. Well, I'm make I'm talking about the recruit. I'm gonna make sure I got the right one pull up for the chat. Right. Yeah, he is for yes, he is from Illinois. He I is gotcha, one gotcha. that he is one that we need to send the whole camp at. <laughs> I'm, I'm, 
Really? All right. Let me, let me pull up some uh, some highlights off, off of him, and you you keep talking. What what he, you what you looking? What are you he, looking for before you get into this guy? I, w- I do want to hear your thoughts on what are you looking for in week two of spring practice. Week two of spring practice, I'm looking for the defensive backfield, somebody to step up besides Bandy. We need some, we need we need a, we need Bandy is, is to me he's not a great leader. You know what I'm saying? He's a person that just makes plays. We need somebody who's like, you know, the air read type, the coach on the field, the line, the line, the defensive backs up when, you know, when they see something, we need somebody like that. I don't know if Bolden is going to be that player. He may be when he comes in in, in the fall, but we need somebody to step up in the defensive backfield. I, I follow what you're saying there with the, uh, I guess, leadership and vocalization um, part with Bandy, but I will tell you, I felt the same way in his, uh, I guess, freshman year and half of his sophomore year. He's a pretty subtle, quiet guy, an athlete, but he, he wasn't like an Ed Reed guy, like you, you know, mentioned. But I will tell you, in this off season, you know, I've, I'm going to throw up an interview in the future video. Um, he's impressed me. He's become, he's kind of getting into his shoes of, hey, I'm the experienced guy now. Um, this is my team. I got to lead them because kind of the Jaquan Johnson, if you will, you know. Um, he's becoming right, more vocal. Right. Um, he's really stepping into those shoes, and I think he's going to prove that to us this year. Um, I follow what you're saying, and I agree with you. Um, it's not that our defensive backs are bad or awful. They're thin there. Um, I do think we have athletes there that are just inexperienced. I think Banda will be able to fix that and be fine there and rump. I'm not too worried about it, but we do need to make sure that in spring practice, especially right now, that these guys you know, have their opportunities that they're making use of them, that they're playing their best ball and getting coached up and not making mistakes and making good plays for sure, man. Right, um, right, Gervin Hall right. is a guy for sure that I haven't heard enough about. Um, you know, how is he doing and such for sure? Um, right. Christian Williams uh, will be coming in. I think he'll be starting um, as a freshman. You think so? I really do. Whoa. I'm really high on the guy. I mean, Bama recruited this guy and I think they were like really high on it. I don't know why they drop off. I think he's a starter for Miami. I really that's do. The guy, that's the guy out of Pensacola? Uh, I'm not sure if Pensacola this was his area. I I didn't think it was, but uh, that was a different guy that we didn't get. I'm I'm gonna double check. Oh. Maybe you're right. I'm not sure in his area. Yeah. But yeah. I'm really high on yeah. him. I think he's a starter. I think him. He, he he maybe he won't beat out, but he'll be a rotational guy for sure, a minimum. Yeah. Um, I like I think- Ivy. Uh, Roger Shaw mentioned he likes Ivy too. Um, I, th- I think he's got to get some experience for sure, though. Um, Ivy, he's got that lesson, but he's gonna. They have to read. They have to read, and they have to be in their place in the right time, or it's gonna be blown up. You know. And what about the guy from Virginia Tech that we got? Is he going to be able to play? Uh, are you talking about Hill, Trayvon Hill? Yeah, Trayvon Hill. Yeah. Okay. So he's graduating. So he's got to graduate in May and finish classes. But he's definitely playing, and right. I think he's a day one starter for sure. So he, yeah, I think yeah, he's, he's starting a, a defensive he end along with Jonathan Garvin. Yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be following your show and that podcast and all, and you know, it's great talking to you. Yeah, man, I appreciate you giving in your thoughts, man. Thank you for calling in. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, yeah, that right there, that was a great talk, definitely for sure. Um, defensive backs is it's thin, it's thin there, but I think we'll be all right there. And that was a, a quarterback that's a uh, coming in in twenty twenty one class actually. So there you go, guys. I appreciate. It. Hey, we'll pull him up. You you got a favorite recruit? Call in. I'll throw him up over there for y'all to see. Check out what's going on. Yeah, he's from Alabama. Yeah, okay, okay. So uh, appreciate it. James Scott. We're watching forty six. Need more than that. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, uh, if you could please smash that like button, that really helps me out. If there's like forty six people, definitely should be higher than that. Um, I know sometimes it's hard to find the like button, but I'm pretty sure if you put your phone sideways, bam, smash the like button really helps. Um, Super chat function is open now. Recently, since we hit over 1,000 subs, now we're almost at 2,000. I mean, it's been just flying. I appreciate you guys. All the love and courage, Matt, constantly gets great. Like, people call me offline when I'm not on the show because I think I'm live. Y'all have given me great thoughts. I, I really appreciate it. It's been an amazing community. I appreciate y'all. Williamson is from Alabama. I thought so. I didn't think he was from Pensacola. Um, but he, he was, a, I'm, I'm really high on him. I really liked what I saw from him. Um, I will mention another thing. I, I don't usually do this too much. Um, I don't try to ask for money, but I am looking to, I, I'm, I'm in need of upgrading a monitor. It's, it's been a struggle. It's been a little tough. Y'all don't see it, but I look at it all day. So, um, if you really want to help out with that, the link down below that actually just goes to a different, uh, website actually gives me more, 100% of the profit. But if you want to just drop a couple of dollars, super chat's fine. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, but not 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 mandatory. Just if you want to help out, uh, I'd appreciate it. Um, he's currently committed to Nebraska, but he's ready to flip with the offer. Jalen, who are you referring to? Desmond Bland. All right, all right. Let me throw him up. What position does he play? Let's. I've, I'm not I'm not familiar with that name. Is this a 2021 guy? Y'all are like on me. 
today with guys that are from the future. I'm just like Desmond Blaine. Let me see if I can find him. No, you're talking about the corner from Alabama. Yes, yes. I'm not the corner from Alabama, if that's what you're talking about. Um, offensive lineman. Um, is he a Juco? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I found him. Nebraska commit, a three-star. Okay. This is the guy that you're talking about. I think I've, I found him also from Illinois. Yeah, man. Coming at six foot four, pretty big guy. I got a collar in. Hits me. Let's pick it up. Hey, hey, hey. Who's on the phone line here? This Q Irvin. Hey, man. I appreciate you calling in. What you got uh, for me? Well, I called in to talk about uh, the DBs. All right, all right. Everybody, what you think about it? everybody is down or is talking down about we don't have a second DB, but in actuality, we have a second DB. And I understand people were like, "Oh, DJ Ivy, he got beat in practice by KJ Osborne, and he didn't have a lot of playing time last year." But the kid is amazing. Yeah. I watched this kid throughout high school. His footwork is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. His, he he can he's long, six one six two. He's up to like one ninety, close to two hundred pounds. The kid is going to be the next Michael Jackson. All right. And, and the thing right. about it, the thing about it, when Michael Jackson was a freshman and a sophomore, nobody knew about the kid, Michael Jackson. It was like, who was Michael Jackson? Who was Michael Jackson? And then he was that spring of his sophomore season, he was getting host and then c- coming to his junior year he was thrown into the fire because all of the seniors corn elder had done left so so we had to have somebody step up and then michael jackson becomes a shut down lockdown cornerback for two years you DJ know ivy is every bit of michael jackson and might have just a little bit more speed all right all right yeah i'm, I'm with you man i i agree with you i think you know, and, and people feel, you know, oh, hold on, I gotta address something. Jay Way with $20 donation. Dude, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that, man. You've been a supporter from day one. I think you've tipped, honestly, the most of that $20, dude. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. Um, and I'm with you, dude. Uh, I think our defensive backs were worried because they're like, oh, well, we're kind of thin and there's not recognizable names. We took a hit because, you know, seniority left in the backfield. I, I like what we have. It's just unproven talent, but I, I agree with you. It's like a Michael Jackson scenario where he's going to prove his name. You just got to give him time. He's got the footwork. He's got the athleticism, and our defensive coordinators are excellent, excellent at the defensive back level. I think we have solid, proven guys there. I'm really high on Ivy. I like him. I like the new guy from Alabama a lot, and we still have Bandy there. So they'll have someone to look up to and follow. It's not like we lost both of them. So uh, I'm with you. I'm not as uh, worried about that part for sure. We do have unproven, very good talent there for sure. And and the thing about it, I've been a Hurricane fan since the early 80s. I watched the great ones come and go. DJ Ivy remind me so much of Mike Rump. Wow. And I remember Mike Rump, junior, I want to say it was his sophomore or his junior year when we lost to Penn State in the Orange Bowl. And Choppy Field, the receiver from Penn State, he beat Mike Rump on a, on a double move. And that was the last touchdown Mike Rump gave up in his college career. Mm. And the thing about it, Mike Rump learned from that mistake. And he said that I would never get beat again. And he never gave up another touchdown in his rest of his college career. So the thing about it, he was an unproven player at that time. So he had to learn. He had to step into the fire in order to get burned. And once he got into that fire, he knew how to maneuver throughout that fire. And DJ Ivy reminds me so much of that guy. Not just because they both were set the number eight, not because not because both of them are tall and lengthy. He plays I seen him in high school. He he reminded me of, of Mike Rump in high school. I mean the kid can just ball. I, I can't wait. He's gonna shut so many people up that don't have Confidence in him right now. You know, I'm with you, man. 
But I'll put this to kind of th like throw a wrench in your argument. What about to Corey Couch or Christian Williams? Don't you think those guys okay. could possibly beat him out? The thing about the Corey Couch, I'm going to speak about uh, to Corey first. So Corey Couch is a animal. He's a dog. He He's a dog. Yeah. So Corey, I don't care about the height. Because if you can play football, you can play football no matter how tall you is. People, people forget about Zach Thomas, one of the best middle linebackers ever. Yeah. Yeah. So to Corey Couch, he will come in and he will compete for the third, for the third, for the third cornerback, which is the nickelback. Mm -hmm. And Christian Christian Williamson, he's a bigger cornerback. He's a he was a four star. Both of them were four stars. The it, thing it, about it, Christian Williamson. You know, another what guy I think that we're forgetting people? about, and yeah, someone mentioned it in the chat, and I like that. Uh, Frierson, I'm, I'm mispronouncing it. Yeah, it is Frierson. Frierson is a freak, definitely. A four-star that was in the same class with Al Blades, was it? Let me pull him up, actually, for y'all. I, I think he's going to be uh, pretty well. I'm, I'm curious to see who works up. You know, DJ Ivy also in that class. Um, we got some solid cornerbacks in that class, man. I, yeah, I, we, had, we, had, we, had, we had DJ Ivy. We had Frierson. We had Al Blaze. We had um, the safety. I can't. Oh, my, oh he got hurt. Like Gervin Hall. I mean, we had we had a bunch of guys in the secondary last year. But the thing about it was that the Fireson, excuse me, messing up his name, with him going to the the striker position. Right. Right. That's gonna open up a cornerback position. That's why I say between Couch and Wilson, they're gonna battle. Along with um, Belto, they're going to battle for the third and fourth position because Belto is another athlete, a great athlete. You think Nigel you're high on Bethel at defensive tackle? No, Nigel Belto, the de the, def the defensive back. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Nigel Belto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I follow the three star. Yeah, yeah, from Miami. And the thing about it, he was a three star in Miami. He was a three-star in Miami-Dade County, but if he was in anywhere in the country, he'd have been a four- or five-star. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I follow. You know, it, here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say is defensive backs, we're thin at, you know, experience, but we have so many athletes. I, I personally think, if I had to call it, it'd be Al Blades and Bambi starting. It's going to be them, and I think above that, it's not so much, oh, no, these guys are awful and Nigel Belton can't do it or anything like that. I think we got guys in rotation that are going to be in there, too. And they're going to do just as well. I'm not too worried about it. And you, you see we have so many athletes that we're rotating to the striker position. Um, and I, I'm curious to see Gervin Hall, though. I, I feel like he it's about his time. I think Gervin Hall, it's his time right now. Make or break it. Or someone else is going to step up in the shoes. You know? And as, as we're talking, I'm sitting here thinking about the 2000 and 2001 team when we had Philip Buchanan, Mike Rump, then we had Marquis Fitzgerald, and then behind those guys we had Entrell Roll, even though he didn't see that much field. That's what we're doing now. We're loading up in that secondary. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Oh so, yeah. Well, the DBs for for everybody that keeps saying LSU, Texas, Ohio State, and Florida is DBU. No, the original DBU is. Located in Coral Gables, Florida. Let's go. That's right. I mean, hey, they were very productive, and I don't think it'll fall down for sure. Hey, man, I, I appreciate you calling in and giving your thoughts and uh, fighting for our defensive backs and proving, hey, they got a lot of talent there. We shouldn't be worried there. I appreciate you giving in your thoughts, man. I don't know if you heard me. All right. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, you too. You have a great evening. All right, you, you do the same. Go Canes. Go Canes. Let's go. Y'all, call in. The phone line is open, and there's some thoughts. You know, yeah, defensive backs, it may be thin, but I, I wouldn't be too worried about it. I think we have plenty of athleticism there, and it's going to be fine. Um, now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch it because I haven't talked about it a lot, but I, we all love it. It's really fun, and it's exciting to talk about. And this year, we can because we don't have a proven guy. That's the quarterback position, y'all. I'm going to start the conversation. I'm going to go into the tra awful traded waters, the big argument, the biasness, and all of that quarter quarterbacks.
All right. Um, yeah, Williams, Willis is there. Ivy, Al Blades, Gl Gilbert, we're all in the same class. Yeah, man, definitely just, I'm, I'm not too worried. I want Bethel at kick returner. Wow, okay. David, you really, really high on him. I'm not sure if he would be the, the best kick returner, but I'd be curious on that. Um, now Rump will be able to prove himself to the other recruits. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, quarterback position. It, people ask me, hey, are you biased to one guy? Who do you think is going to win it? Um, who's got the edge now, and it keeps changing around all that, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, I, 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 here's what I've been before spring practice, since I started the channel, I've been really high on Williams, been high, and I'm going to stay high on him, I'm a little biased because if he's a Georgia guy, and he's my backyard buddy, I like him, and so that's, that's the point, but I'm not saying that he's winning it, and he's the only guy they should look at, so uh, it, who is going to win the job, it's, in my opinion, in my opinion, I think Enos knows exactly what a quarterback needs. And he even talked about kind of mentioning his interviews like, look, this is the guy that's passing the best. But there's other stuff. There's other mentality. There's other intangibles that a quarterback must possess to be the starter, to lead the team. When difficulties come, he looks all of his teammates in the eyes in the hall and says, guys, it's going to be okay. We're going to get through this. This is how we're going to do it. We've been here before. We're going to do it again. You know, and I just got a call in here. I'll pick it up. Hey, hold on, man. Uh, I appreciate you calling in. What's Who do I got on the phone line here? Kyle. Kyle, I appreciate you calling in. Is this your first time calling in? Oh, yeah. All right. What, what you, what, I'm talking about quarterbacks here, and uh, we'll, but we don't have to talk about that. I'm, I want to hear your thoughts on, if, if it is quarterbacks, that's fine. Um, what are you looking for in spring practice week two? Uh, the only thing I'm really lo I'm like really curious about is how's our blocking technique coming with our tight ends and our fullback? You know, I mean, there's there's a lot of talk about like how good with the hands and you know pass catching they are, but no one ever really talks about how good at blocking they are. You know, that, I want to know like the mm -hmm. the strength, you know, the strength increases from the, the uh, from last year. What what you know, what's the new bench presses? What's the new power clean? I'm interested to like see the weight room improvement. I, I follow. Yeah, I follow. All, That's a definitely a very interesting thought for sure. Um, I, and I'm I, I'm also curious. I put it down in the the chat earlier. Jordan Phillips. He was a defensive tackle that we recruited late in the process last year that we got committed at the last minute. But this guy was massive. I think he was like 6'4", 6'5", 330-plus pounds. He had a huge wingspan on him. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to know what's really, what's really going on with him because I know he's going to play our one technique. You know, uh, you know how would he uh, – how good would he play if he's teamed up with – you know, Nesta or or Bethel or this new guy, Ch Chidozi or whatever his name is Chigozi, coming in. Yeah. I mean, I, that, that's all, I, that's really all I'm interested in. And w with the quarterbacks, uh, to tell you the truth, I mean, I, I think as long as the only thing that concerns me about Perry is uh, if, if we're going to be playing up under center a lot, if he can take the snaps from under center good. Because mm -hmm. we did it a few times last year, and he had a little trouble with it. That's, he kind of fumbled the ball a little bit, uh, which, you know, it's really not his fault because coming out of high school and Rich's offense, you know, they didn't have a lot of under center stuff. Everything was out of shotgun or pistol. That's, but, that's uh, a good point. And I, and I believe if, you know, when it all comes down to it, the way Enos runs the system, I don't know if you've seen a lot of Arkansas highlights, but if that's what he's going to run, I'm actually down with it. But – if that is it, I think it's going to really come down to whoever can take the snaps under center the best. You, you know, I, I'm with you. And I, what I'll build on that is, and I think, and I'll, I was going this, is I don't think it's the guy that can throw the best pass when there's no uh, competition going for it. I think the guy that's going to win right. it is the guy that can do it in scrimmage games is what Eno's looking for. The guy, like you said, right. can take the handoff, can read the defense, can make the pass. Is he the best, most complete zip on the ball pass? Maybe not. But can he read the team? Can he get the playbook? Can he get the he's Enos is looking for a, a guy to facilitate his plays in the most efficient way. He's not looking for the right. guy to show the best explosive talent. Like, oh wow, look at that one guy. He's looking at a guy that's gonna be just a part, a facilitator of the whole offensive scheme because his offense utilizes multiple players. 
not just right. a phenomenal quarterback. And I think for our offense, yeah. you look, we always, I mean, everyone wants a star player. Everyone, and every time, you know, you see ESPN where they're like, yeah, this quarterback, blah, blah, blah. And we'll know all the quarterback's names. We won't know the offensive lineman names and all that. But the team that wins games is when the quarterback is not the only guy to feature. It's when the whole offensive system is humming best. So, and that's kind right. of why I'm and high on Williams. I think quarterback's position is A, pass the ball. A, pass the ball. And so when a quarterback comes in, he's like, hey, I'm really good at running. I'm like, can you pass the ball? Okay, Qu- running is secondary. It, honestly, it's third because right. you got to read and you, you got to – that's that's what I'm looking for. And that's why I'm yeah. high Williams. And everybody's with- jumping to, uh, you know, maybe Williams is, is the better quarterback. Maybe that is the best quarterback. But, you know, uh, you know, I'm down with any quarterback that we start. I'm going to be behind him. Whatever. I mean, I really have no favors. I want the best quarterback to start so we can win. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, I mean, and, and that's where I'm at now. But if I mean, if I had to choose, I, I I guess I'm maybe on the Perry wagon, but I don't hate on Tate or Williams. Yeah. Yeah. Now I, you know everybody say everybody's quick to give up on Tate just because they you know the rumble the rumors are well he's having trouble with accuracy on the out routes. Well, you know what? Out routes don't make the whole offense. And like Eno said, you know, we're going to build that offense to the strength of the quarterback. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, he has troubles on out right. They're going to keep working on him until he can correct it. But at the same time, they're going to play to his strength and, you know, d- do things that take Martell for him to be successful, just like, you know, whatever weakness uh, Perry has. They're going to do things to bring his strength to the game so, you know, we can win. And, and you know, that's I, kind of- I, remember, I remember I said the other day uh, – if it's in the pocket, I honestly think Perry's more elusive. But if it's breaking the pocket, running the ball, I believe Tate's more elusive in space. I follow. If I that follow. makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. And, hey, I'm going to address the chat because I don't want to leave them out of it. Um, Coach Coop is in chat. What's up? I swear if these thumbnails get any more fire, it's going to burn me when I click the video. <laughs> Coach Coop, I appreciate it, man. I've been getting better, but I can't say it's quite there. Um, but I appreciate it, man. Uh, you got some fire artwork going on there too. Um, yeah, you get these like, Hey, I appreciate it. Um, to men to talk about your quarterback situation. I'm with you, man. I'm, it's not that I'm like, Oh, if it's not Williams, I'm disappointed. I am every, and every time when I'm watching film, I'm not saying, come on, Williams, show them you're the best. I'm sitting there and I'm like, Tate, you dropped a ball. I want you to make sure it does not happen because I want all these quarterbacks right. to be showcasing the best talent to make the competition so intense so difficult that you know the guy that's going to be there has really won that job. It's really proven. And I don't think we're going to find that out just through spring practice, throwing out routes, like you said. I think it's going to be a scrimmage game, and that's why we have three of them going on to really sure. prove. And I think Enos wants to know who's the guy because he he needs to know how he's going to build his offense. And in fall time – Right, and when the spring game comes, the way, I, the way I'm truly hoping it, it, it happens is – Perry's on one side and Williams on the other with Tate Martell working on both sides. Because to me, uh, Perry and Williams, I mean, they, they need to fight it out, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. And I follow but, you. Know, interesting, interesting mentioned uh, today on a uh, on the radio, I believe, um, they talked about, to, to the man Diaz, oh, about the quarterbacks, and you know, he gave his general thoughts, nothing big. But what he said was interesting. They're like, hey, do you think – they didn't give Williams a chance. What is up with that? And he said, look, we had two guys, one and two, and it's really tough to give the third one enough reps or many of them. And that's all that went down. Right. I can't blame it, and that's what happened there. And it's really tragic and sad because I think that I, I wish he was worked into the one-twos. But I'm with them in that in this situation, it really needs to be a one-two. And the third one, it's going to be really tough to work out. And I, I, I hope the best man wins. And for a third guy to come in and just win it out and beat them both out shows that, hey, he really possessed it. But he needs to know a little bit leaning early on to build his system sooner rather than later of who the quarterback is, in my opinion. Do do I want it to compete the whole season? Yes, I do want them. But I I, I think it's such an important part. You got to... At least the kind of athlete that you're looking for. Are you preferring a runner or a passer, you know? And he's going to see that with his offensive line and scrimmages, you know? Um, t- two more things, and I'll, then I'll get off the phone and let you take some more calls. Uh, one, in the end, Enos knows what he's doing, and so does Manny Diaz. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's the first thing. And my second one was, I put in the chat earlier about, do you think they would uh, slide band in and put Al Blades out on the outside in the nickel package? 
concern concerning uh i mean B- bandy he's he's a dog already and everybody knows it uh mm-hmm. but uh do, do you think that they might slide bandy in because he played in the he played on the inside slot of the corner in the nickel package especially when we played against notre dame and that's how he ended up taking the pick six back mm-hmm. right right but do you think they'll still do that and put out blades on the outside I would say it doesn't depend so much on uh, on Bandy so much as it depends on whether it be Ivy or whoever else that wins out that second job, and, and because they're right. gonna go with the guy who, who's the, he's the most experienced guy, so they're gonna say, "Look, where's our biggest vulnerability, and let's have our experienced guy fill that in the best." You know? Well, um, I know Bandy's gonna start. I know I know Bandy's gonna start no right, matter what. Right. But so, when they when they move out to regular base or whatever into the nickel. Do you think they're going to keep Bandy outside or kick him inside? I mean, I would Bandy's prefer to keep him outside. If it, you know, if it comes to that, that's that's my right. preference. That's my preference. All right, man. Well, I'll get off the phone. Let's take some more calls, man. Yeah, man. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for calling in, Kyle. You have a great evening. All right, man. You too. All right, guys. Y'all heard it there. That was Kyle talking about defensive backs. Definitely interesting thought. I'm not gonna lie though. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not a big defensive. I didn't play defense. Uh, I played wide receiver. Well, I, pl- I played some secondary, um, but I was not a starter So in high school, and I'm, I'm not a great football player. So when it comes to terminology and all that, I'm not going to sit around and say, look, I know exactly what needs to be happening. Um, I know exactly what needs to be going on in the scheme. But that, that's not my highlight part. Um, but I, 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 I prefer experience. I prefer experience when it comes to that position because you really need to – if you blow your coverage, it, it's a score. It's a score, and it, it's got to be – uh, very carefully decide who's there. Um, I know some guys may lean one way or another, but you got to look out where's your biggest vulnerability and fill it in with experience, in my opinion. Um, Roger Shaw, good point. Nice to have confidence in the staff for a change. Uh, yeah, 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 for sure, man. Hey, 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 who do I have on the phone line here? Hello, how you doing? Doing well. Who do I have on the phone line here? Oh, you got to talk on the phone line. Hey, do you mind taking me off a of speaker? I think it's giving a hum and it's kind of hard to hear you. Okay, you got Brother Frank on the phone, man. Perfect, perfect. So what? Okay. What, what you think? I think. Yeah. I think. I think. I think Bandy should go to should go to nickel because he that's what he's gonna play in the, in the league. And um, you, I try Nigel on the outside, man. Hmm. Okay, I follow. Nigel. And then you got it and you got it you got you got to stick Fyshen in there this year too because he was one of your four stars. And um I believe he got he got a lot of heart, man. He can handle handle himself. Fyshen. Yeah, and, and that's something I want to see in the defensive backs also is heart. I want them to <laughs> Diaz talked about I don't want us to play just good defense or whatever. And it's different than the Algo and the Rick era. He he talks about I want us to play violent football. Yeah, be legal but be violent. And defensive backs Oh man, they if there's someone that can really feature their violence, those guys are right. right there. As soon as that wide receiver catches that, bam, you can destroy him out in the open if you do it right. So definitely See, there. What 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 I what I like about Nigel, he's a he's an athlete. Right. And he runs a four something, four fun in the forty. He can play ball on the defense side of the ball. Right. We gotta use our young guys, man. We gotta use them. That's why we got them. You know what I'm saying? Like if you think about it. Bandy ain't gonna play no outside in the league. He's gonna be a strong safety. He's gonna be the nickel guy. He's short, but he's tough. You right. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I Me as that. a coach, if I see Bandy at the outside, I'm gonna stick my tallest receiver out there. That's just that's just an overlap. You understand what I'm saying? I follow you. I follow. You understand what I'm saying? And and, and I love Al Blaze on the on, on the outside too. And oh. I use and sometimes I use Gilbert as a a a, a package corner. Yeah, Gilbert. I th- I think they're gonna throw him uh, into the striker position. So definitely, right? Uh, be there. And P Hill, interesting said he said the defensive backs are good. They'll be better than what we had previously. Just give them a little right. time. Do y'all think? I'm gonna ask this to everyone and you also on the phone. Do y'all think the defensive backs this year can be better than last year, or are they in fact? Oh man, our our, the- our defensive backs this year they could have played last year if you if you if, if it's under me. DJ Ivy, Gilbert, Al Blaze could have played last year instead of playing special teams if it was up to me. You understand what I'm saying? Because Uh-oh. they had number six. Diddy, he was pretty good, but I could have used I could have used Al Blaze 
with his toughness and his speed on the outside. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. And I could have used Gilbert too. But now we got a new year. Them three guys came in together, Gilbert, Al Blaze, and um, DJ Ivy. They got to be on the field, man. They yeah. got to be on the field. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I, I see yep, that. I got saying? a 305 number calling me in. Um, hey, I appreciate you giving in your thoughts. I'm going to try to get this other caller in. Um, you have a great day, man. Uh, great thoughts. Great thoughts definitely on the defensive backs, man. All right, let's go. You ain't worried about that. I'm, my DB is good, man. I just need my offense to move the ball. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, who do I have on the phone line here? Hey, what's up? What's up, man? You got Jay calling from South Florida. Hey, how you doing, brother? <clears throat> hey, man, I just want to touch on the secondary situation this year. All right. I pretty much and uh, share my thoughts. All right, all right. I think uh, first, I think the uh, secondary – is the most inexperienced a uh, group on the defense, and I don't think it is. I don't think it will be. I don't think it will be safe to take your best corner, the one that really has experience, trade him, band and put him in a nickel position. Mm-hmm. I think he should be more of. A, they should. They should move him around based upon the best receiver, or they should move him around throughout the game. Because right. he does have experience in the uh, nickel. Okay, I follow. And Slim Shady Kings puts out an interesting thought. We had the number one passing defense last year. Yeah, are we able to retain that? Because that's that that's high high standards. Um, but well, I, I, well, I you like know it. the um, well, you know the number one defense. You know, most of the time when you really look at the dynamics of uh, defenses, it doesn't always depend on the secondary. You can have a great pass rush or a, a great it, front it, four, it is, front five. It's the five. whole scheme. I'm with you, Those man. three I'm linebackers contribute. Those three veteran linebackers uh, contribute greatly to that number very, one passing defense. Very much so, yes. So if you got a good pass rush, you got good pressure up front, you're stopping the line and you're calling good plays, you necessarily don't have a – you have to have a dominant secondary. Right. Right. Very, very true. Very true. Great thoughts for sure. Because uh, um, last year, in my opinion, I know a lot of people are not going to agree. Like, uh, in my opinion, I think that uh, the only standout players that was in that secondary that was giving teams a problem when we actually played against people who were on our ta- talent level was uh, Jaquan Johnson, Bandy, and uh, Michael Jackson. Yeah. Everybody else, they a little bit off and on. I like the red wine and stuff like that. But uh, when we played against top-tier talent, like, you know, he got a. Uh, he it didn't step up in, in certain plays, and sometimes he did. And that's why I want to mention this. I, I I haven't talked about him enough, and I'm so excited, y'all. If y'all haven't looked, I'm gonna pull it up right now. Bubba Bolden is the number one transfer portal guy that we got. It, uh, uh, in fact, two four seven put him in number one. I'm so excited to see this guy play. I know he's safety; he's not a defensive back, but this guy when he hits, he hits like a cane. You, this guy is so destructive, so violent. I'm so excited to see this guy play, man. I, I'm really high on him. I, I can't wait. You know, we lost some guys maybe in the safety position, but oh my goodness. Bubba Bolden. What's his um what's his measurables? What what's up? What's his size like? What is what is he built like? Bubba uh, Bolden. I, I, this I, I'll, guy. I'll pull it up right here to to get his uh, updated one. Um but Bubba Bolden, I believe he's yeah, six foot three, two hundred pounds. He's not a small guy. Okay. He's a good lean athletic player. You know? And he just, he hits so violently, he doesn't look like he's 200 pounds when he hits. He hits like a linebacker at a safety position. It's just, it's so violent. There he is, guys. I'll pull up some film on him. Perfect. We got some huddle sports here. It's, I'm so high on the guy. I'm really excited to see him play. Yeah, man, we got to get him down there, man. Like uh, like I said, I like the depth, Cindy uh, secondary. You know what I mean? At least we have a lot of bodies and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, I think the way that uh, – I don't know about this Blake Baker guy, but I think last year the way that Dan, Manny constructed the defense, it was – most of the action really came from the uh, – a lot of the blitzing, the linebackers in the front four. It, That's where he really it was. created the It was the destructive the force, the chaos that they was leading right. on he to bad it. decisions. Yeah, he, had a, he ran an attacking 4-3 defense. Yeah, yeah. And, then he added a striker position with the four two two five. Yeah. So I I think I think when you have that kind of play calling, that kind of innovation, and you got the uh, the talent that Miami has 
on the front four, front five with Garvin and Rosal and Scott Patchen stepped up in a lot of big moments last year. And uh, Which those is three a linebackers practice, and stuff like that. You necessarily don't have to have. You necessarily don't have to have the best secondary in the world. I think it's unproven. I think it's unproven, but it, yeah, you don't have to if you have such a good line. Yeah, but we'll see. You know, like you say, we, we, he, they they brought the uh, Bubble Bolden guy down. You got Gervin. You got uh, we got you got pretty interesting players, man. Like you know, but everything is it's a lot unproven right now. You know. It's, yeah, yeah, which is every year, honestly. College is a sport where college football, you, you got guys transitioning always, always. Some place is going to take a hit. You know, a linebacker court took no hits at all. It could have, though. It really could have. And it, it's it's how the teams can transition from then on and keep going. Like, take Clemson. Oh, my goodness. You know, we you know lost this and this talent, but they kept retaining it and putting in other guys after that. And that's the thing that Diaz does with the big cane drill. He's looking for leaders, guys with experience, to get the next group ready. No, maybe they won't start this year, but in 2019, they followed in the footsteps of be it Bandy, be it, you know, whoever, Bolden, be it the previous year, the linebacker core. It's very, very important, and Diaz knows that, and he, he puts a big emphasis on it, which I think is, is a right. good future for Miami, not just one good year, you know? I absolutely agree with that, man. What do you think about the uh, uh, quarterback position and this whole debacle going on? Um, I he, I think it's going to sort itself out. I think this we got talent somewhere, be it in Williams, be it in Proctor, be it in Perry, and I'm looking for them to prove it to me when they have adversity in their face. Not when they're just throwing passes. I want them to be accurate, adversity in their face, which includes you have to know the playbook. You know, you, you have to know how to manage your team. You have to be a leader. You have to be off the field uh, conduct where people respect you and look at you. I'm not discounting anyone. I'm not putting, I'm just saying that's the quarterback position. And like uh, Dia said, it's a 24 hour job. Always, always your quarterback. It doesn't matter if it's game time or not. And more than any other position. And um, in, in my opinion, yeah, it's, I'm so excited and I'm unsurprised to see Williams being the best passer. But I'm waiting for the guy to prove it when adversity is in their face. So, um, which I think that's what I think is going to come down to. Mm -hmm. and, and one thing that I just want to say this, I'll try to be brief. One thing that worries me is uh, I hear a lot of good thing about a lot of good things about Dan Enos, and uh, I was checking out his resume and everything like that, and what he have done with previous quarterbacks, but. I'm pretty much I'm kind of concerned because this Miami team is so talented. Okay. I mean, it's so talented to have depth on almost every position on the field. Okay, they're so talented that sometimes I think when you take a team that's this talented and you try to be too creative, you can kind of take away from it. You can okay. kind of take away from the progress of the team. Okay, I, I follow. What you're and saying. my opinion, I just saying like they need. It should be kind of some balance because this is not a team like, let's say, like a Northern Illinois University where you're building an offense off of the scrims of players and uh, you may not have that much talent in the receiving core, but you got this one receiver who's a playmaker and he's pretty much consistent with catching the ball. Like, this team is really a loaded team. I think I, I understand. So what being concerned. creative sometimes, too creative is not good. Sometimes you just got to let them play. I, I fall with you. I, I I don't. I think he'll dumb it down and not not make it too complicated. To where he's like, just be an athlete. Um, I it, I think it's an added position, added ability that he has at Miami, and that's why it was a lucrative position for him to come over here. Look, he had the same thing at Bama. He had to figure out who's the quarterback. And hey, by the way, David, thank you so much for a five dollar donation. I appreciate it so much. Um, guys, the link down below or the super chat, all that money is going in. I need a brand new monitor. Um, it's something I look at. Y'all never see, but I really appreciate it if y'all could help me out there. Um, I think it, it it improves the competition that we have. It improves uh, players uh, pushing in practice harder, working harder. And I agree with you. I don't want to you know keep rotating every single wide receiver. I I want it to be stable. And I think Enos would, will do that. I follow what you're saying there. Or or in in the Baker side where you know at Louisiana Tech um, you have that one player. But I think they they know what Diaz is looking for as a head coach. 
and I think I think it'll I think it'll mesh together. It will be a year one has got to prove it. You know, it's it's a lot to manage, and that's that's a problem. You know, where people can't say Miami's going for eleven games easy. It's the coaching staff got to prove themselves as long with the players because it's it's a lot. It's a lot to to get the whole offensive scheme and defensive scheme together for sure. And, and what do you do with this talent? How do you balance it? Who do you feature? Who do you not? It, it definitely definitely different. It's a lot of different dynamics. Yeah. Hey, right, man, I appreciate you calling in. Uh, I'm going to try to take another phone call. They've been nagging at me at 305. I see you. Call in one more time. I'll try to get you. But I appreciate you giving in your thoughts, man. All right, man. Thank you for everything, man. Yeah, you have a great evening. All right, 305, I saw you calling in. I'm trying to pick up you, Ron. 305, if you're 305 and it wasn't you, I'm sorry, but I'm picking up 305. I'm picking up 305, call call in. I want to hear your thoughts. I'm sorry that we had a couple of callers. I want to give them their time, but I'm going to try to limit it a little bit better and get everyone's uh, thoughts on spring practice and Miami Hurricanes coming in, what you're looking for. Uh, let's go fill a good season. We're all uh, saying the same thing, but in different ways. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Butter. There. Uh, I don't think Daniels is, is making it creative more as competitive. Uh, okay, so I think Danny Nose's creativity won't be as big year one. I think he realizes that, hey, this is what I have here, and uh, I need to make sure and, and watch out. Um, David, you're getting a record number of calls. I am, dude. I really am. I really appreciate it, guys. Um, it, it, it helps me because I, you know, I, I need to hear everyone's dynamic, and it makes the show more fun. And, hey, your voice gets to be heard by, what do we have, 55 other people. So, Call in, man. It, it, it helps out the King community, everyone, the football community. It makes it more fun. I definitely am. I, I'm enjoying the channel. I honestly thought I was going to stream for an hour, but I'm going to keep going, y'all. Y'all are giving great input, great thoughts. Um, I want to hear you guys' thoughts. Spring practice, quarterbacks, whatever it may be. Um, there's my number. I just dropped down there in the chat. Um, but, you know, uh, I think the motion on offense will be a game changer this year. Um, you know, Kyle, do you think we'll have growing pains on the offense when we play the Gators? So as in not being able to move the ball and score. All right, growing pains usually means, hey, I have this injury, you know, this problem, and it's continuing. I don't think so. No, to answer that, because it's getting completely changed, completely changed up. So whatever issues or hearts they may be, they won't be the same ones. And the ones that we had last year were uh, guys not being consistent, not having a quarterback settled in, not having a play caller that needs to be stable with it, and uh, a scheme that is way too basic. I don't, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Uh, Anton needs a secretary soon. <laughs> Roger, maybe, maybe, man. If it keeps going, for sure, I definitely need to get someone to help me out manage stuff. We'll see. We'll, we'll keep, if we keep growing at this rate, I'll, I'll definitely be looking to recruit some of y'all to help me out there. Um, I like the Cuban link, man. You do? Man, I just got this in. Uh, uh, yeah, turnover chain. It looks amazing, does it not? Um, I threw it down on my last upload. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Um, it's uh, eBay. They sent me it in, and they, I, I, I tell y'all, if y'all make Kane stuff or you know of anyone, um, send it in. I'll feature it. I'll make sure people come over there because us Kane fans, we love it. It's cool. It's awesome, and it's high quality. I'm not going to show you guys stuff that's not high quality, and we've had you know these custom rugs. We have this shirt. We have this chain. If it's not high quality, I'm not going to show it up, okay? So this it's not plastic. It's nice stuff for sure, and uh, I love I love supporting the Kane family, man. Got to rep it. Um... How, how can I get the chain? Wesley's asking. It's in the link. In fact, I'll throw you the link. I'll throw you the link right now because you asked. Um, let me get it for you because uh, they'll definitely appreciate it. But yeah, I've been I've been reaching out some um, and throwing it up there. But do you guys know of anyone? There's the link right there. Come back though because <laughs> I want to hear your thoughts. But that that's the link of where it was at. Um, it's it's a fairly priced at thirty five dollars. It's it's high quality. It's heavy. It's got some bulk to it. Um, it's not flimsy. And you know they they took their time with it. They got the back done and everything all around. So I like it. I really like it. It looks really nice. The gold is shiny, so definitely pretty cool there. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, I'm going to try to keep ramping and stuff. I'm going to do a little bit more general channel discussions since got a lot of y'all. Um, working on a whole bunch of stuff for y'all. Always working off stuff. But if you have ever any ideas, throw it in the comments. Send me a DM. What, whatever it be, um, I'm, I'm looking for it because this is a community. It's all of us together. It's not Anton show, okay? It's us, the King community, to get coming in together. So, um but I'm, but I'm gonna finish. But if if no one else is calling in and talking about my quarterback th thoughts, um, I, I think man, I think we're gonna have ball this year. We we may go to the champ. Okay, wow, that's really hot on this team. Uh, I've I've looked around and I've heard what people th thought, um, but I I'm not sure 
if we can say that year one. I feel like the coaching whole staff needs to learn how to win for a team consistently keep going, you know? It, it ain't that easy. It's it, Year one, it's it, it can, it's possible, like in Raleigh's situation, but maybe it won't. What is up? What do I have on the phone line here? What's going on, man? It's Slim Shady. Hey, Slim Shady. How you doing, brother? Another day in paradise. Hey, so what you what you thinking? What you want to talk about here? Um, I don't know. I liked a lot of what you had to say. Um, I don't disagree with you that you know Williams has probably looked looked the best so far. I think there are days going back and forth between him and Perry. I do, everybody that was on the uh, the Tate Martell wagon, unless he pulls a one eighty over the summer, I don't see it happening. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't expect them to uh, to name a starter during the spring. I, I don't think during. I don't think during. Um, prior to fall, I think they'll name one, but they will say it's still they're all put a competition. That's what I think will happen. Well, how I see this working out, and I could be completely wrong, uh, I think I think Tate will get the start in one of the scrimmages. Jaron will get the start in one of the scrimmages. And Perry will get to start one of the scrimmages. Very interesting thought. That would be very, very good for sure. Yeah, I, I follow what you're saying because that's the big thing to me. It, adversity, attacking, it, you got to prove it there, and that's where I think Tate Martell can do a 180 with a it weak could. offensive I, line. You know. Well, I offensive line had plenty of problems. I don't think it's as much on the players as it was between Stacy Searles and the play calling Mark had last year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I was just not a fan of Stacy Searles at all as, I a, wasn't. as an offensive line coach. Mm -hmm. And, and when you have such predictable offense, I mean, it just, it, it, it gives your defense the advantage, your opposing it, defense. Yeah. Yeah, it does. And you watched it. Uh, remind me, which game was it where we were out of our tagged ends and the line looked really good, <laughs> ironically, because we had to pass the ball and be a different offense than we were all that season, and it actually looked a bit more efficient. Um, oh, that was a pit game. That was the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that that's what I felt like. You know, I, I'm with you there. I'm not that worried about it. I think it'll, it'll fit in. Does it have to be proven? Sure, but... Um, it, the the guy behind the helms though, that quarterback, it, he's got to have to corral that team. He's got to get it all assistant. He can't be because we start Florida Gators day one. You know, it he can't be on a head on a swivel, not knowing what's going on, and he's gonna have to stare those offensive line guys if they were whooped up by a very difficult defensive line. And say, guys, I need y'all give me a couple of seconds. I'm gonna make a play. We're gonna throw it efficiently. We're gonna have you know a nice emotions going on, confusing the guys. I think it'll work out. I think it will. It's going to be better, okay? Maybe – will it be enough for a national championship team is what I think the fans are thinking in their minds. They're not saying it. No, I don't think you can say that we have an offensive line by any means that's going to be national championship level this year. But is it good enough for us to have a very good season year one under Manny Diaz? It can be for sure. I don't think there's a giant hole where it can't get there. But it's a process. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you, and I and that's you know that's some conversations I've had with other people. You know, I, things need to be put in perspective a little bit. I mean, at, in the last thirty years, the only the only coach to make it anywhere near a national title in his first year is Lincoln Riley. That's it. Yeah, I'm trying to think right now in my history book of be it limited. Um, and I'm not talking first year at a new school. I'm talking first time head coach. I mean, Nick Saban's first few years uh, when he started out, I believe it was at UMass. Horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, you know, Kirby Smart's done done pretty good in the last couple of years. His first year at Georgia, abysmal. I believe it was the guys that did do it. Um, to because because uh, uh, the you put post up Larry Coker. You you're right. Yeah, David Brown throwing. Yeah, Larry Coker did, but it wasn't so much him. It was the team. Let's be honest. You know, they're, they're, go back. It's on video. Go back. Watch the second part. Larry Coker was pure and simple, the chaperone to get them on the bus. Yeah, that yeah. was a ready-made national championship team. And that I was believe... a national championship team in two thousand. 
who was it that was one year Oklahoma had that happen? Not Lincoln Riley, but before that, back in the early 2000s, I think that they had it happen one year. But I follow what you're saying, uh, and you're right. That wasn't that wasn't uh, Bob's or that wasn't Mark Stoops' first year. You're right. It was year two. It was year two for him. Yeah. 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 Definitely. And uh, yeah, okay. They beat Florida State in one of the most boring games I've ever watched in my life. Zach, Zach, Zach uh, I don't even know how to put it. Zach misspelled JB Barry, Gator fan. What the heck am I wearing around my neck? I'm wearing what y'all wish y'all had. A turnover chain. Y'all have some. I heard a doll or something. A, a ch- I, I ain't seen nothing about this. Y'all, I'm wearing what the whole nation of college football wish they had, yet they throw in a getter-looking uh, throne that they call a turnover throne or a turnover plank or a backpack. I'm throwing what everyone wish they had. That's what I'm wearing, man. Do y'all Gators have this? I don't think so. Y'all gonna be scared of it, though. Yeah, I don't understand why Florida all of a sudden is so high on Franks when they booed him out of the swamp three games last year. He, he had an efficient last end of the season, and they keep overlooking it. They keep saying, oh, we have the best quarterback, we have this and that. I'm like, mm, y'all know that Franks may not even keep the starting job after spring. It's not that he's so awful. I mean, they have another guy that's unproven, but the quarterback position for them ain't the best. They got a reserve there. I mean, <laughs> they got a reserve. I mean, Franks is a game manager. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, that, that's what he is. I mean, okay, you want to point to the Michigan game? Really? I mean, no. You you beat a completely demoralized Michigan team in a yeah. game that they didn't even care to be in at that point because they lost to Ohio State at a gym. Yeah, because they really wanted to get a nab at you know the Big Ten championship, and at that point, were they in contention for the Natty? I think if they beat OSU, they might have been for the playoff. They were they were in the top four when they lost to Ohio State. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you there. Yeah, they were in a game that they wished they weren't at, so they didn't put their heart in that, and it's unfortunate, but that's what it was. Yeah, um, I, I agree with uh, uh, I think his name was Chris called in a little while ago talking about the tight ends. Yeah. Um, as far as blocking tight ends before he got hurt, Michael Irvin was the best blocking tight end we had. Yeah. They, yes, Rogier yes. Rozier just never threw him the ball. We didn't. We did not. Um, they didn't look in his direction is what how was happening, too. It was just like, what is no, going it was it, From the point Chris Herndon graduated and left, Malik Rozier forgot there were tight ends on the team. Yeah, he, he did. It, Rozier did not like tight ends at all. At all. Perry... Did I mean he he threw anyone not just tight ends but my bad Kyle my bad Kyle yeah it, <laughs> Kyle dang it I thought it was I was like I thought it was Kyle that he's referring to <laughs> uh, Pondy is a good blocker Pondy is injured so far man he's got a knee he's recovering from I believe um, but it, he might now, he, now as far as as far as some help on the offensive line I think you can take a guy uh, like Nesta and have him play two way football. Really? Like you would put a mess that O line. I think he can do good on opening up holes for running backs. I think he can do great. On the interior. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh I did not think that's that's possible. That would be a a wild move. Do you think uh, from a player standpoint though, Neston played line, you know, to my knowledge, most if not all of his career. I don't know if he played any in high school ball O line, but does he want to do that for his NFL draft stock? I think it can't hurt him. I think it makes him more versatile player. I mean, I, granted, I, this is coming from a biased opinion. I was a Tampa Bay fan, and Warren Sapp played three-way football for them. Okay, I got you. I got and, you. I mean, it, if, if you're shown the versatility to maybe not necessarily so much in pass block situation, but in opening up run lanes – blast through the opposing D-line and get into that second level and get in and take care of one of the linebackers, I think he can do a great job. Yeah, I, I, I follow that. Hold on, I need to address something in the chat. Barry, you're going here and trashing our quarterbacks, running backs, whatever. You cannot name any Miami players. You only see one side of the argument. Learn both sides of the roster before you go out and say, Oh, we have the most talented. Yeah, I know you have a you know an athletic parent. I know you have really good wide receivers. Yeah, maybe you have uh, 
average running backs but or, or a quarterback can facilitate games but if you can't name a single player on the other opposing team they'll go going on talking about whatever you know that you're, you're amazing we have some very athletic guys that you got to recognize and learn and keep in perspective they, facts man facts tick me off exactly. every time i see it i keep seeing florida gators oh we have all this and that and I, I can tell they don't even know the players that we have here i'm not saying that my miami hurricanes are going to know the roster of florida gators you know left and right but at least we keep it in perspective. Dude, it, the only time Florida's beat Miami in the last 30 years, it took their Lord and Savior Tebow to do it, and he's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, now, now another comment that I want to I want to address. Somebody just put in there talking about uh, uh, Regulus George. Yeah. I want to see him used big time, and that's another thing that's going to be a little bit biased coming from a Tampa Bay fan, but. Go back and look how Tampa Bay used Mike Allstott. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. that has not been done in football in a decade. And, and I think that's some, that's an old school thing that you can catch a lot of people off guard with. I believe I, – I heard and I, it looked to me that Enos favors that. He likes that. He will do that, some people were saying. I, I mean, especially, especially moving him out of the backfield to catch passes. Mm -hmm. Let him drag a couple people with him and fight for that first down. Yeah, yeah. And, and even though maybe, I think, I don't know about Realist being the best pass catcher that like you're talking about using him you know, as a flex option, but I know we have guys there like left and right. I mean, even Asa Martin's getting sitting out this year, but Lingard wasn't healthy. That dude's six foot tall and he's a running back. Like, he, he's got hands on him too. He's athletic. I'm, I'm well, excited. And, and that's what you do with the summer is try things out like that. Yeah. Or work on somebody's pass catching ability. So you can have that option. Mm -hmm. And it's not maybe that like, oh, this is the Miami offense. We have this flex guy. What I like and I think Enos would do is say, oh, game five, this team suffers and has never seen this look from us. We can do this, though. We practiced it. Bam. And, and the defense is going to be thrown off. The way he talks and conducts himself in place, I think he's going to make game time decisions like that. And I think it'll give us an edge that we haven't had in a long time. Yeah, and something I particularly want to see out of the defense, and or not the defense, the offense. Uh, and you saw it out of Clemson this past year, and it was my criticism of uh, James Coley when he was the offensive coordinator was the ability to sustain drives. When James Coley was the offensive coordinator, yeah, they could score an average of you know a minute seconds. and ten seconds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, that, great. You can you can get down the field quick. But you still lost games that way. Yeah. I want to see them be able to move that ball 10 yards at a time and wear down an opposing defense. This is my argument for Tate Martell. I'm not in this bandwagon either. He played in an offense at Ohio State with Urban Meyer that does just that. And he did it, did it so efficiently. I like that, and that's why I think... He's got a roof and a ceiling in a, you know, adversity that he can do that maybe other quarterbacks not possess. Now, I'm not saying that, the, that he's going to win or whatever, but he, that that was a – look at OSU. That's what they did. And that's something that gives defense a time to take a break, to to reset, to, to you know, <laughs> get a breather. And it, it makes the team most dominant when you can do that. Definitely. Yeah, well, I think, I think Perry's running ability is very underestimated he because is. if you look at the play calling – they didn't run anywhere near as many quarterback options with Perry in the game as they did compared to Malik. Yeah, they they thought that they, he he thought he was too fragile or something because he's stuck up with his SEC players that he's looked at. But Kelsey is elusive. He's elusive, man. And he's a lot faster than what people think when he got out in open space. He, he showed oh, it yeah. a couple times last year. Definitely. I'm, um. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. I think it's going to be between Williams and Perry. The only reason I, I think Perry will edge him out is because the system Danny knows is like to run in a path in the path uh, lends itself to a more mobile quarterback. Yeah, and uh, Kyle, I think that's kind of answering it. Kyle threw up and said, "Hey, Slim, who do you think is more elusive, Perry or Tate?" <sighs> elusive is a general mm. word, in my opinion, though. What kind of elusiveness? Mm. You know what I'm saying, like. I mean, it's hard to tell because you. I mean, you've seen some of Tate's running ability in in you know the most film you have on him was the uh, uh, what was that the Rutgers game the last Rutgers, year. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and to be honest with you, at that point, he's in there against Rutgers second and third string players. Be, keep in mind, Rutgers were one and eleven last year. 
<laughs> yeah. So you're talking a horrible starting unit, and their second and third string players are even worse. And, yeah, Tate's going to look great against him. He will. It, but he showed some talent, you know, in, in high school, which is a different world. I'm not going to say that he – I don't know. I think it depends. If, if, if the pocket is collapsing and there's a disaster – Perry, I feel like, is more lenient to, hey, let me do a spin move, try to pass it. If it's not there, I'll run for 5, 10 yards. Tate, he's not even looking to pass at that point. He's running. And he, he can do something impressive, like maybe 10 yards, but he may miss a possible throw is what I've seen on his high school film. And I kind of was like, mm, I don't know if I like him as much because of that tendency. He, he ran well, more I, than he passed on points. And I have a personal preference. I agree with, with David. I have a personal preference. I'd rather a pocket passer, um, and that's where I will dislike Tate a little more because he's like Jalen Hurt. His first instinct is to run. Mm-hmm. I want a guy I want a guy that's going to move that pocket and running is going to be his last resort. Right, right. Now, I'm, I'm with you there. I'm with you because – and that's why I was high on Williams. I was like, he's the best passer. Quarterback's job is to pass, not run, pass. Yes, can well, you yeah, run? Well, yeah, and, and he's the only pocket passer there, or, or he's the – the, the highest ranked pocket passer there. So obviously he's going to be the best, you know, best well-rounded quarterback of the bunch. Yeah, but he does have dual threat ability. He's a dual threat quarterback. He wasn't a pro style. Um, so it's not as elusive as Tate or I thought he Perry. was listed as a, as a, as a uh, pro style or a pocket passer. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to double check, man, but I believe he was a dual threat coming out of high wrong. school. I'm, I'm going to double check. But I believe he was actually a dual threat. Yeah, dual threat quarterback, at least 247. Let me double check on a couple because 247 isn't always right. Um, Rivals has him as, two, uh, as a dual threat too. Uh, he's a dual okay. threat. He is a dual threat. Okay. He has that ability. And, and, well, and, and that's you know the same thing, like I said, for Tate. We just really haven't seen a whole lot of it out of him. We've seen a whole lot more of Perry and... You know, I look at I look back to last year, and you saw games where Mark pulled Malik out and put Perry in. You saw an immediate response out of that offense. It, it put Just a spark the in them, and I think. Uh, but but I'm different. Where people say that's because of Perry. Uh, my personal opinion is that's because it wasn't Rozier. <laughs> and that's a possibility. That really <laughs> is. I, I don't disagree with that. Because um, and and here's my. I'm not against Perry. I'm all for him, and I was really high on him. He lost my trust after last year. Not his fault. Rick's fault. But I've I felt his tendency was he needs to settle into the game. He needs to get his rhythm. But when he gets his rhythm going, he's the most freakish athlete on the field. And I feel like when you look at Florida Gators being your first game under year one Manny Diaz, Perry's got a big hill to climb to be able to be drive one, I'm ready to go. And if he wins out and he doesn't have an efficient drive one or two, um, I won't be surprised to see Williams or Tate being there and being able to you know, showcase their talents better than him because of that. That's been my well, opinion. Let, I mean, let's be honest, too, though. I mean, week one is everybody's sloppiest game. Oh, yeah. It, it is. It is. Um, and, 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 and I don't – nothing I've said, I'm not against Williams. I'm not against Tate. I'm all for who's going to be the, the best person to do it. My personal opinion is I think it's going to be Perry. Um, and I agree with what you said. You can't really get a good judgment on what Perry can do based off of the offense we had last year. Yeah, yeah. But um, here's my thought on the Florida Gator game. I don't think the quarterback wins it. I think the defense that scores the most wins the game. because. Oh, I completely agree with you. Because, like you said, mistakes, game one, which it's both really good defenses – who gets the turnover chain most and even goes so far as scoring with it is going to be the, the turnover margin is 75% of if you win the game or not. And I think that's going to be game one deciding factor for Florida Gators Miami. It's momentum. It's everything. I think it's everything. Yeah. And, and I think offensively, your key is going to be whoever can run the ball the best. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't, you um, can't have fumble uh, fumbles. You can't have interception. It's got to be clean. It doesn't have to be impressive. It, it just got to be clean. Yeah, it does. I, I mean, just week one, like you said, every, everything just really you're, – you're getting into your first game. you got to get settled into the season. It's everybody's sloppiest game. 
but I completely agree with you. It's going to be two talented defenses and one offense that is so-so and one offense nobody has any clue about. Sure, yeah. And and that's where I think people discredit Tate too much, and I think he has the, the win part is I think he's the best game manager of all the guys if it comes to it. I think he can play pretty clean ball. I don't think he's going to be as risky, maybe not as flashy. Um, but but if, if he passes, yeah, it's not going to have as much zip, and he may throw it. But, uh, I mean, he went 10 for 10. Yeah, I know 111 Rutgers, but he, he, in my opinion, what I've seen, uh, Perry's looking to make the flashy play, and he can make it. Tate is more like, hey, let me just hold on to the ball. I'm going to do something pretty amazing with my legs. Um, Williams is, is just, we don't know. We really don't know. Um, but no, I, and, and, and I, I basically, I base most of my argument for Perry um, off the second half of the Florida State game last year. Because every first-year starting quarterback is going to go through growing pains. They're going to make mistakes. And the problem is Mark didn't stick with him to let him work through that and, and get to where he's more of a consistent quarterback. I agree with your argument, but here's what I'll throw in there, uh, a wrench versus it. Trevor Lawrence, did he, year one, have to uh, go through growing pains? I know he's a freak athlete, but <laughs> he got the job you done more efficiently. You realize you're talking about probably the best quarterback ever to come out of high school at this point. Because he is, I mean, he's unanimously a first-round uh, uh, number one overall pick his freshman year. Okay, well... He, He's a freak. He, he, he is. He is. But I'll, I'll, I'll throw it down as what I'm saying is uh, we have guys that they – I mean, Williams was in the same club with him. He can do that, I think. You know, he's just unproven. People were high on him. Um, take um, – shoot, who's the guy I know, again, on, on FS Who? But, hey, he, he did freshman year. Um, and actually, he did have his growing pains. He looked horrible in that Syracuse game before he got hurt. Uh, shoot, what was his name? Gosh, the Tampa Bay guy, right? He's in Tampa Bay. Oh, you're talking about Jameis Winston? Yeah, Winston. See, Winston was a guy that you know. I'm not gonna say they lot and all that. I think that was Jimbo. Really, he just he knows how to use his quarterbacks. But um, that was a lot of Jimbo. Uh, but he, he I mean, because Jimbo year. had a great team before him with Christian Ponder. Yeah, he he. And you take you know he had honestly not great quarterbacks when he come to the NFL after that. But he knew how to do them and facilitate them to to, to not be in Akron. Now, um, I mean, he, he I think he left Florida State partly because of the quarterback situation. He's just like, I'm done with this. This is awful. <laughs> he did not. <laughs> and AM, oh, my goodness, they're going to be a threat to every single team they see. Um, I'm big on Jimbo. Oh, I, I, everybody in the SEC better watch out for Texas A&M. That's I, my personal opinion of them. I, definitely. I'm, uh, definitely. I think they can, they, they can be favorites in every single game and definitely – in year is it year two right it's year two not year three with Jimbo right yes I think I think they can match up athleticism and scheme and just everything Jimbo versus uh, Alabama uh, it's gonna be yeah and I think I think another one that's gonna come in under everybody's radar this year is gonna be Jacob Eason in Washington okay yes that's a that was a very interesting quiet move I saw that one too that Pac-12 needs to redeem themselves, and Washington may be the team. I'm high on Oregon, um, and their guy. I don't remember his name. Oregon is uh, Mario Cristobal, and I wanted that guy before Rick. That's, that was my guy. I was like, man, because um, my dad, he actually worked at FIU, and I, you know, he's there at FIU, and all. I was like, I want Mario, but we didn't get him, and he's doing really good at Oregon. I think um, he, he, he might make some noise at Pac-12 for sure. Oh, I think the Pac-12 is going to make some noise this year, period. Between, I'm, I'm behind any team Michael Each is the coach of. Uh, and then you have Washington just come off a really good year, and then you got Jacob Eason as quarterback this year, and then you got like you said Oregon. I, that was going to be my next one out of the Pac-12. Yeah, but other than that, I don't know. I'm trying to think if I'm overlooking. I know Utah always has their kind of like surprise sometimes. I'm not big on USC. I think they're going to collapse now. Still, um, I, I don't know if there's anyone deeper in the Pac-12. They're not deep, but those two 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 teams have uh, they might make some noise. I mean, if USC can find them, you know, the next their next quarterback, they'll be okay. That's basically what they're missing. I I don't think their coaching staff is where it needs to be at. That's my opinion. I don't think. Well, it's... I say the same thing about Florida State. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> definitely, definitely there. But have you noticed how happy they are? 
to finally have a quarterback on their roster that's actually beat Miami? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and they had to get a they had to get one of the worst quarterbacks in the Big Ten to do it. I but they finally have a quarterback on their roster that's beat them. A left-handed pocket passer at FSU is basically Taggart pressing the red button to me, though. I mean, that's just last case scenario. That is just. <laughs> He needed well, someone... I think that's just Tiger trying to get him a quarterback there because he had James Blackman and a converted uh, defensive back. It, it was the red button, man. It was the red button. It just uh, – I don't <laughs> – I think Hornibrook is going to be picked off left and right with Miami if our defensive line play, plays like they should. It's Well, all it's, all it's going to take, be, be perfectly honest with you, is the defense not be on the field for 45 minutes a game. Yeah. Yeah, I'll follow uh, I mean, like I said, I don't think they have a championship caliber team, but I don't. Th- I don't think a good Orange Bowl win this year is going too far. I'll follow you. I'll follow. You. Hey guys, I'm gonna step aside one second. I need to let my dog out, and I'll be right back. Give me like two seconds. All right, go dog. Bella, come on. Show yourself off to the channel. Bella. There you go. Sorry about that. Hey, guys, stop in the way. I'm back here. Bella, come here. Come here. You, have, you haven't made an appearance. You've been sleeping all day. Cane dog, she, I'm going to get her a, a freaking bone to chew up for that gator game, man. She's going to destroy a stuffed animal during the game. It's going to be great. <laughs> now, somebody put something in the comments. What do you think of them doing kind of like what Alabama did last year, running two quarterbacks? So, so for Miami? Yeah. Oh man. Um, you're. I mean, it's something I've thought about. I just haven't given it a whole lot of thought. But right, I saw it in the comments. I was like, well, I'll get your opinion on it. Here, here, here's what I'll say to that. Uh, you need to have two things. A, you need to have amazing um game callers. I mean, you just had. I'm not saying Diaz is not that. Um, he's never been a the head coach. Uh, before uh, you, you need to be game planning has got to be on point Enos knows how to do that and he's got a lot of head coaches surrounded around him uh, too uh, in Man on both defensive side of the ball uh, that's one thing that Bama why they were able to do that second thing is uh, what was the score at halftime Miami's got to come out and just destroy butt for them to be at, at least like 20 points ahead of the team to, to do that I think is why they were able to do that so well I don't well let's be honest Alabama would have been up on pretty much everybody they played regardless of who played quarterback it, it, yeah I, I'm with you there and so I want to see that from Miami I want to see if we're up by over 20 points I w- I'm gonna be criticizing Diaz and not throwing the other quarterback and show his worth and maybe find out that we have even more talent than we had a starter I'm okay with that but if you're coming into the game with the mindset of let's use two quarterbacks I'm against that. I'm saying come into the game and say, who gives us the best chance to win while we're winning so much? Let's give someone else a competition next week. Look at the opponent. Look at your talent level and the headaches that they, their defense gives you and, and prepare for it appropriately. That's that's how I think you should – you should not look at it as let's do two quarterbacks and feature both of them. And I don't think that's how Alabama approached it. I think they approached it as, hey, we're doing so well. Let's throw in this other guy. Wow, he's doing even better. Let's throw him and see him as a starter next game. You know, that's kind of how that worked out. It wasn't the goal. Um, and Enos was there. <laughs> Enos knows how to do that. It may come to that uh, with a cake ACC schedule, uh, but not the Florida Gator game. I will see multiple quarterbacks if drives aren't being sustained, um, I hope. But, uh, which I'm I'm not against. I don't want us to stick through with one quarterback and then get down in the deep, deepest of holes. Um, I don't want to keep switching it up, give them three drives, you know. But if he's thrown three interceptions, get the next guy in. You know, it's it's, it's going to be out of hand by then. Um, right, right. Now, I mean, I, I agree with that. Like I said, it's something I hadn't given a whole lot of thought to, but I saw it, and I was like, well, let's see what he thinks. I, I don't think you approach it with that goal. Um, but 
uh, it could happen. It could happen because I people trash our quarterbacks because they're not proven, but I think they're very talented and athletic, and I can totally see. Um, it, it, you look at it even in comparison. Alabama's guys were, you know, uh, both runners. So Perry and Tate, one better passer, the other better runner. Um, and if injuries happen, and thankfully we have the depth at that. If if it had been Mark Rick, man, we wouldn't have Tate. Um, Williams was would have left. We'd have <laughs> we would have had even Batocha heck um, or Proctor. It would have been FSU type of awful situation. But now or even DJ and a Wildcat. Yeah, yeah, DJ and a Wildcat, man. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So uh, I'm I'm glad that we have such depth, and I'm confident in our depth to use m- multiple of these guys. I don't think there's a single fan here right now that's like, please don't use this quarterback. As of last year with Rozier, we were all saying it before the game started. We were. And I think FSU fans or whatever team you look at that has a hole in their quarterback, they're saying that, you know. Um it, it, it's, it's how it is. It, you've got that player that you're like, please don't use him. You know, I don't feel that way right. about Perry. It wasn't his fault, his issues, and he showed flashes. He has ability, definitely. Yeah, um, I know. As far as as far as the spring goes, what I the main thing I want to see out of the spring is two things. I want to see players step up in that leadership position, whoever they may be, and I want to see, I want to see, I want to see some dynamic improvement of our backup and third-string linebackers because our entire yes. linebacker core is going after this year. Yes, yes. I Yeah, definitely. Spring is the time for them to shine. It's sad to see Wilder being injured out with his neck for now, but definitely, yeah. Um, I believe Huff is the name to watch out for at linebacker. Um, shoot, I need, to, I need to look up on my matrix of the guys. Um, Jennings was kind of up in that. Brooks is the other guy. That's who it is. Brooks is the other guy. Definitely. Yeah, I hope they, they'll make some noise right now for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and that, and that's definitely what I want to see this year too. Is is a, a little more rotation of the of the linebackers and get those guys into games. Yeah. Um. And as far as the secondary goes, I'm not as worried about it as a lot of people are. I think they're going to be just fine with Bandy and Blades, and then probably Bubba and probably Halls are going to be the other starter. But I mean, really, truly, with with Bubba uh, coming in, you've got three NFL safeties. Yeah, we we do, we do. It's just I'm scared of I I don't like foresee it, but you got to think about us when you're a head coach injuries, you know. Um, uh, you do, you do, and 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 I don't wish it upon anybody, but. Unless they are just in desperate need and everybody else on the team is hurt, I don't want to see Robert Knowles back on the field. <laughs> I'm with you there. I'm with you there. He's getting banged up, and I'm not. I don't want anybody injured. But yeah, I don't. <laughs> oh gosh, I don't want him there. I think the only way he's thrown there is basically them to prove to him that uh, he he mean starting at Miami is maybe not his thing. Uh, hey, I'm gonna try to wrap it up. The slim shake. I appreciate you calling, man. I really appreciate your yes, thoughts, sir. man. And I appreciate you all in the chat. Um, great thoughts, great discussion, y'all. I appreciate those who donated. Thanks so much. Um, all those donations are going. I need a brand new monitor. <laughs> this one's huffing and puffing and steaming off. Um, guys, it's a spring practice tomorrow. I'm going to throw up a highlight video, definitely, for sure. And uh, I'm going to throw in an interview of Bandy because someone apparently didn't know. Bandy's really stepped up and it seems a lot more mature. So um, I hope y'all have a great evening. And, you know, go Kings.